should he do with the body? Should he hide it or destroy it? <laughs> Whatever he does could prove crucial in the detection of his crime. In their office in Scotland Yard, Inspector Bribeasy and Sergeant Porno are busy catching up on some important paperwork. <laughs> Why do yours always go further than mine, Porno? <laughs> I think it helps if you fold it into the shape of an aeroplane first, sir. Yes, perhaps you're right. <laughs> Fly's been pestering me all afternoon. Do you want me to use papers, sir? Yeah, it's a good idea. <laughs> no, it's no good. I'm going to have to kill it. Give me the gun. <laughs> Winged it, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. The super wants us to report to the shooting range before we go any further with the drugs case. <laughs> well, what do you think of that? Right, Sergeant. This is the procedure. <laughs> First, you announce that you are an armed policeman. Then you tell the villain that this is his one and only warning. And then if he still refuses to give himself up, you open fire. You got that? Give it a try. <laughs> Basically, that's very sound, Sergeant. Uh, the order was slightly wrong. But well, that's... I'll try it again, sir. I'll try, I'll try it again. Why not? This is an arm warning, and I am your last policeman! <laughs> Three drug dealers are dead. What have they got in common? Oh, I got it. They're all in the police morgue, sir. <laughs> We've got to start asking ourselves some very serious questions, Paul. Well, you start. Right. What's the highest mountain in Russia? <laughs> What's John Wayne's real name? Uh, Marion Faithful. Close. Try again. Uh, John Faithful. Sorry. Next one. Where in London is Rotten Row? Oh, I know this one. It's on the tip of my tongue. Wrong. It's in Hyde Park. Damn. <laughs> right. Who scored the fastest century in cricket? <laughs> I'm hopeless in sport. All right. I'll ask you about this. <laughs> Hello? Is that you, Porno? Yes, sir. Can you finish my socket? Uh, no, sir. Well, get off the line. What? There's been another murder. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, get the car, Porno. Get the car. I love them old woolsies, eh? Yeah. Anyway, no time for nostalgia, Porno. Let's get in the car immediately. All right, Constable, where's the body? This way, sir. Right, stand back. <clears throat> Over here, sir. Over here, <laughs> One for the record. I don't think it's our man, sir. Yeah, too small. Might as well chuck him back in, I think. Right, <laughs> <Hello, laughs> sir. I'll get paid a lot of money for lying in the sun. Then I should do. I'm a top-class reporter. <laughs> <laughs> right, Mr Jones, perhaps you could tell me why you feel particularly well-suited to this job. Well, uh, 
Well, I, I, I'm shelving has always been a passion of mine. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I've all, I've, I think I'm attracted by the idea of being able to put, you know, something into shelving, really get involved in the world of shelving, you know. You know, freestanding units and interconnecting brackets and melamine tops, you know. I, I, just, I, just, I just love the way they stand there, you know. Mm. And they're holding up like, vases and books and, and little china dogs and yeah, yeah. Just, just being so interesting, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah I see, yeah. So uh, why did you do a master's degree in marine biology? <laughs> Well, I thought, I thought it'd be a springboard into shelving, you know. <laughs> You're what you might call a bit of a shelving freak. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, well, I mean, it's in my blood. I mean, I come from a shelving family, oh. you know. And I, I just wanted to put back onto shelves some of the things that I've sort of taken off them, you know. It's a pity this job's got nothing to do with shelving, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is, yeah. Still, nice to have a hobby. Oh, yeah, well, that's all it is. It's just a hobby. It's just one of my interests. I mean, I'm far more interested in other things, you know. Such as? Buying. <laughs> Selling? No, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a sort of, I'm, you know, I'm basically, the trouble with me is I'm an outdoor sit at a desk, stay at home, <laughs> loner who likes meeting people sort of chap, you know. Yeah, yeah, and I've sorry. always wanted to, to work in, com in communications. Uh, uh, computers. <laughs> Community theatre, you know. <laughs> uh, graphics, bookkeeping, beekeeping. Uh, aerodynamics, designer jeans, loft insulation, uh, the journalism, farming, welding. <laughs> Mr Jones, would it be... Uh, <clears throat> would it be fair to assume that uh, you've got no idea what this job is about? Yes, yes that's right. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr Jones. Welcome to British Telecom. <laughs> Welcome to Birdwatch. We've come here today to the beautiful Titherton Reservoir and Nature Reserve to see what sort of birds come here to feed at the edge of the water. So far, we've seen a few common waders. Like the common wader. <laughs> but it's 6.30 now, so let's see what else our, um, our camera can pick up. <laughs> As you can see, there's not too much activity at the moment, but soon the wading birds will start to... Uh, oh! Ah, yes, now there is something there. Yes, oh, I see. Oh, we seem to have disturbed an early morning lugworm digger. <laughs> Fair enough. After all, he is after the same juicy tidbits as the birds. So perhaps we can consider him as part of the natural scene. <laughs> the lugworm is probably the main source of food for many wading birds, especially those with the long, highly adapted beaks so useful for winkling those juicy worms from their lair deep in the estuarine mud. <laughs> Other beak adaptations include short, powerful beaks, Oh no. oh no, for a moment I thought we had a green-legged marsh creeper in the distance, but no. no, it's just a bit of wood. So, as I was saying, some species have short, powerful beaks. And then, of course, there are the extraordinary spoon-like adaptations of such birds as the spoon shoveler, <laughs> the oyster catcher, the mussel daub, and the cocker jar. Well, I'm sorry there hasn't been too much going on on the mudflats this morning. Perhaps we'll have more luck tomorrow. Just a minute. What? Look at that. D look. No. Oh. I thought it was a shag. A common cormorant, but it wasn't. Well, until next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. 
ethisch verlangen. Verlangen naar lekker. Jammer alleen. Want iedere keer als ik iets gegeten heb, daalt de pH in mijn mond. Freedent is ook verlangen naar lekker. Maar Freedent helpt mijn tanden gezond te houden. Want kou ik Freedent nadat ik iets gegeten heb, dan stijgt de pH weer snel. En dat is goed voor mijn tanden. Dus kou ik lekkere Freedent. De eerste suikervrije kauwgom in Nederland. Erkend door de Wereldfederatie Tandheelkunde. Woensdagavond is bij ons vaste kaartavond. En dan maak ik hele lekkere kipsaté met pindasaus voor de pauzes. Het is bij ons dus heel vaak pauze. Tivisop presenteert een unieke en exclusieve safieren armband van sterling zilver. Versierd met exclusieve edelstenen. De 16 blauwe safieren zijn echte blikvangers. Tussen elke safier zit een fonkelende diamant die de mooie en fantasievol vormgegeven armband versiert. Het is een tijdloos elegante armband en een nieuwe unieke aanwinst voor uw sieradenverzameling. U krijgt er een certificaat van echtheid bij en de armband wordt natuurlijk geleverd in een prachtig juwelendoosje. Als u nu de safieren armband bestelt, krijgt u tevens een zuiver zilveren ketting met een fraaie zirconia. Deze prachtige armband van sterling zilver met 16 safieren en 16 diamanten bieden wij u aan voor een droomprijs. U betaalt slechts 229 gulden. Bel TV Shop daarom nu. U bent van harte welkom met uw bestelling. Klanten. Dit is een splinternieuwe dubbel CD. De kermisklanten spelen de 100 grootste hits van toen en nu. Kom maar! 100 hits voor nog geen 4 tientjes! Ja, 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 ja! 100 hits voor nog geen 4 tientjes! De kermisklanten, het gezelligste accordeon nu over Nederland! Arcade brengt nu ook de beste films bij je thuis. No one knew where it came from. What is that? No one knew where it led. We've opened up a doorway to a world we know nothing about. And now, no one knows. I can't make it work without the seven symbol. How to get back. You got seven minutes. No! What a rush. Nu te koop op video. Stargate. Brand ergens in huis. Maar je slaapt. Binnen twee minuten is er een alles vernietigende vuurhaard. Maar je slaapt. Binnen drie minuten zal de rook en hitte iedereen in huis verdoven. Maar je slaapt. En binnen vijf minuten ben je gestikt. Wie maakt je op tijd wakker? First Alert Rookmelders. Essex. Essex. Don't talk to me about Essex. I own most of it. <laughs> of course, uh, the way to make money nowadays is to get into property. Yeah, I know, yeah, but I haven't got a temperament for it. How do you mean? Well, I can be a burglar, you know. I've no. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about burglary, you know. I'm talking about property speculation. Oh, yeah. You think about it. I mean, that house you live in, your house, that must be worth a few, Bob. Now, that must what be worth... Oh, yeah. What do you think about selling that, mate? Really? Have you had it valued? No, I well, you should, you should get it valued. Oh, well, how do you do that, then? Well, you've got to go to the professionals, obviously. Yeah. I mean, you've got to deal with experts. Sure. I mean, people who know what they're actually doing. Oh, you know? right, yeah. But, uh, who, who do you think that is, then? Well, I could do it for you. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, but, I mean, you're not an estate agent, are you? I'm not, no, no. I'm not, but I, but I could be. Yeah, but, I mean, I mean I don't, you're just a sort of lazy good-for-nothing is out to make a thing. <laughs> well... <laughs> Yeah, I see what you mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look, I mean, you don't know nothing about houses. I know, I know about houses. You I know don't about know houses. nothing about houses. Of course I do. Well, I mean, your house has got a bloody great leak in it, hasn't it? Look, look. Look, yeah. it's bound to have a leak in the roof. I mean, the age of that house, I mean, it's still got the original tiles on it, you know. Has it? I was there when a the bloke from Barrett stuck them up there. <laughs> yeah. The other thing is, I know. Yeah. I know about the property market. Do you? Yeah. So it's up and down yeah. all the time. Is it? Yeah. My mum, you know yeah. my mum? 
Well, she's your mother, isn't she? That's right. <laughs> now, she, she has got a house in Dulwich. Oh, yeah. Dulwich, you know, yeah. near that, uh, near that posh school, what's it called? Uh, Arrow. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> now, she bought that for 500 quid just, oh, bef yeah. just before the war. Mm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Guess how much she sold it for last week? Well, I don't know. <laughs> well, just guess, go on. Well, give us a clue. <laughs> no point giving you clues, just, just guess. Oh, is it more or less than the 500 pounds? <laughs> well, it's more than the 500, oh. obviously. Oh. Look, just, just have a guess how much she got for it. I don't know. Uh... Oh, you'll never guess anyway. Well, 149,000 pounds. <laughs> how did you know that? I just guessed. Hmm. Anyway, that's right, 149,000 pounds. Blimey, I'd never have guessed that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, mate, it's, yeah. it is ludicrous. It's, it's ludicrous. It's ludicrous. Yeah. Property, yeah. property now, yeah. it's, it's, it's funny money. Funny money, it's, yeah. It's, it's monopoly it's money. monopoly money, yeah. <laughs> it's chocolate money, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, if I move out, like, I mean, where would I go? Now, where would I move to, well, you know? Well, this yeah. is the point. Yeah. You sell in London, yeah. you move out of London, yeah. you move up north, yeah. and you I tell you what, the value for your money you can get up yeah, north. Really, yeah. Oh, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Like I was, um, I saw this property for sale yeah. in the uh, in the Exchange of Mart the other day, yeah. and it was uh, it was in uh, it was in Northumberland. Oh yeah, right? yeah that, that's up north, is it? Northumberland. Yeah, well, that's north of Umberland. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> now this property, yeah. look, I'll describe it to you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Country mansion, twelve bedrooms. Oh yeah. Tennis court, oh, yeah. indoor swimming pool, stables and kenneling. Oh yeah. Your own woodland. 300 acres of grouse moor, your own trout stream. Guess how much they wanted for it? I don't know. Four and a half million pounds. It's <laughs> <laughs> a slip, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Do you want to know why it was so reasonable? No, I don't know. Because it was miles from the tube. Oh, That's well, there we are. <laughs> That's it, yeah. I mean, I think that is like, I mean, that is like a little bit like out of my league, innit, really? I mean, I think, really, I mean, one with one thing or another, I mean, then, then there'd be the stamp duty on top of that. I That's true, yeah, yeah. That's another 18p, innit? Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> you know, I think you only got what happened, right, to my, uh, my uncle Muriel and his husband. Mm. And they're two little ones. Oh, the two little ones, yeah. yeah. How old are they now? Well, I, don't, I can never tell the age of them two I was. No. And they, they had terrible trouble, right, because they was going to move out, right? And then when the bloke, what they was going to move into, right, he wouldn't move because the people like the people who was moving out of his house what he bought the house from like and they were like it was they wouldn't move out of their house because they it was the people who moved out of their house i know what happened there mate what's that you see the chain had broken <laughs> The chain all, had broken. All that trouble just because some bog chain had broken. <laughs> That's nice, isn't it? Uh, don't tell anyone, but I'm a plainclothes policeman and this is my day off. <laughs> Hello, I'm the All Purpose TV presenter. Yeah, and I'm the All Purpose TV presenter's friend. Today we're going to be looking at some amazing things. And meeting some really brilliant people. With incredible bits. Incredible pop videos and cartoons and thingamajigs. It's amazing. I pop up in the morning on breakfast time TV. In the middle of the afternoon. Hello again, it's me. The late, late six o'clock show. It's wicked. Radio One. There's no limits to our appetite for witness wacky fun. We've got some surprise TV grounds coming up. And in a moment it's a time for Floella's evening spin. We know we've had in and they coloured tights. The simplest undertaking is a lovely big surprise. Amazing, is that true? That really is fantastic. We may not know what's going on, but we're so enthusiastic. Oh, we Andy. Yes, we are, Ken. Come on to Geraldine Spinks, who's three today. And now over to Maggie, who's waiting for us down at the Transport Museum. Hi, Mags. <laughs> Here on my network, we've got some great videos of Craig Charles reading poetry that rhymes right through the night. Brilliant. And we can keep this up all day, can't we, Billy? Yes, we can, too. And we're going to as well, Kieran. Absolutely, Simon. I can turn your daily viewing into one long round of tats. It's someone's birthday every day. Have you ever thought of that? Your father's dying. Your mother's ill. Lost everything you've got. We're flying on a hovercraft and jump around the lot. I can't stop smiling, I know it hurts. My jaw is going to break. We can keep this up forever. But how much can you take? We never think of bad things. We never think of pain. We never think of anything. We haven't got a brain. You've got a brain, Gary. No, it's amazing. No. Anybody at home not got a brain, write and tell us about it, OK? Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> Here we go, Nick. <laughs> Having a day out with Peter. Hey, 
Shirley. And Len Voluja. And Mum. And Mum. And the Grand Nipper, of course. Good old Len. Safety first. That's the way to do it. So, off the jolly well go. All aboard for adventure. Off we go, off we go, off we go. First stop, then has refreshment. Shirley changes the bottle. Well, I was supposed to know. Did I take it off or what? Well, Mum changes the wheel. Hey, turn it off. Come on, turn it off. Whenever you know why are we? Turn it, 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 turn you want to see the sights. And what a sight for sure eyes this was. On an otherwise anything fortune. Come on, everybody. Out of the car. Give me a bitch, have a look. What have we got here? A hubcap. Contents of a lady's handbag. A first aid kit. Could you stand back there, please, sir? Yeah, and a police Just a minute, just a minute. I'll just come in. What's going on in here? <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. What a terrible mess here. Let's have a look, dear. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Poor man. Still, nothing a few stitches won't take care of. Me? Me? Hey, my son. How's that? There's a point where. Oi, oi, watch this. Len taking the law into his own hands? Surely not. <laughs> well, we helped where we could, and that was all the thanks we got. And now, a load of books. <laughs> Joking of bullocks. Oh, I forgot the food! Here's a silly cow, if ever I saw it. Luckily, young Peter comes to the rescue with lunch. What is it, Angelo, or something? No time for the sandwiches now, eh? Look! Oh, God! Oi, oi! Here comes trouble. Sleep An anxious moment for our cameraman here. <laughs> oh, 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 missed. It's only end of a perfect day. And what a picture. One for the hour. Ladies and gentlemen, I, <clears throat> I don't know if any of you read a publication called, I believe, The News of the World. <laughs> we certainly don't. Well, I mean, except for last week. <laughs> when certain allegations were made in it about us. <laughs> now, um, I don't think it would be useful to repeat them here. No, I don't think it... No, no. But, but we would just like to take this opportunity to... Well, set the record straight. Absolutely, yeah. uh, Mel and I have known each other for, um, well, years. Mm -hmm. And uh, although we work very closely together, we are... We, we are not... Um... No. <laughs> <laughs> we're not. <laughs> oh, I mean, we get on very well, yeah. and, and, and we're sometimes seen in public together, but we are... We're, we're not. You know, we're not... Uh... <laughs> exactly. Yes. yes. Well, I, I mean... I mean, I'm not, anyway. <laughs> 
<laughs> Nor am I. <laughs> so you say, Griff. And I certainly wouldn't want to contradict you. <laughs> Good. Hmm. I mean, it is actually nothing to be ashamed of, you know. Well, of course, I mean, I know it's nothing to be I mean, ashamed of. It's a perfectly, you know, acceptable thing, you know? I mean... Well, I know it's a perfectly <laughs> acceptable thing. It's just I am... I'm not... Uh, I'm just... Uh, I'm not. <laughs> you seem very anxious to deny it all of a sudden. I am not a homosexual. How do you know? <laughs> well, I, I just know. Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried it? No. <laughs> Well, then, how would... <laughs> how would you react? How would you react if I were to suggest that uh, we... <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. So you do think homosexuality is disgusting? No, I don't think homosexuality is disgusting. <laughs> I just think it would be disgusting with you. <laughs> Oh, yes. He always knows when it's time for his dinner. He hears me opening my legs. There's Fluffy out of the tin. Meaty chunks. Mm, delicious. Bowl is... loves it. I sits on the table and purrs with delight. Yummy. Mummy, never satisfied. Why don't you let me finish any of my sentence? And there's Fluffy. Kitty meat every time. Nine out of ten cats talk more sense than their owners. <laughs> Um, Julian Peary, I'd like to begin, if I may, by asking a few general questions about the social and ideological uh, framework of your film Journey to Nowhere. Yes, well, uh, well and now, could we, uh, I wonder if I, we could, is it possible to start by defining our terms? <laughs> well, <laughs> exactly. So, how do you respond to the uh, widespread critical charge that um, that your film is too is too narrow in its vision of modern Britain. Well, now, now, you see, I never intended to make a, uh, uh, <laughs> a, a, a fully, a fully rounded picture of Britain, or in any, in any way, um, embrace the whole of modern society. Uh, 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 tea, tea. <laughs> <laughs> so it would be um, pushing the boat out to say that you had any definite political standpoint. <laughs> you see, that, now you see that, that, is exact, that is exactly the kind of um, um, knee-jerk critical reaction that really um, winds me up, you see. In no sense is this a political... Um, 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 Cow V. Move. Movie. 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 Um, I'd like to move into a completely different area, if I may. <laughs> as far as I can see, your film is unmistakably left wing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold your horses, hold your horses! <laughs> Now, yeah, I mean, you're, you're um, opening up a whole new can of... Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh, come on, Julian. You're pulling my leg, Sean. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs>
What makes a criminal a criminal? Is it perhaps a prior childhood or a hostile environment? What makes a criminal a criminal? The stripy t-shirt, the mask and the large bag with swag written on it. And what makes a criminal frequent such low dives as the Purple Pussy Club? <laughs> Inspector Bribeasy and Sergeant Adolf Porno were sent to investigate. This is a bit of a knocking shop, isn't it, sir? <laughs> yeah. But this is where we're going to find Eddie Supergrass. And if anyone knows anything, it'll be him. Not a nice place, is it, sir? Sex for sale, Paul. No, I wouldn't be found dead in a place like this. It's despicable. Hello, Inspector Bribeasy. I haven't seen you around here for days. <laughs> no, good evening, madam. I don't believe you had the pleasure. Hello, <laughs> dear Reginald. Here, uh, I didn't come here Saturday, so I miss you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hello, Inspector. <laughs> I've been a top supergrass for nigh on 60 years, I have. I've informed on all the big crimes I have. Mm. Hello, Eddie. Sixty years of supercross. <laughs> have you heard anything about the King's Cross murders? No, thanks. I'm a supercross. <laughs> have you heard anything? <laughs> Write the question down, Porno. For the right price, Inspector, I'll tell you anything you want. Tell me I'm handsome and good in bed. Later. <laughs> I've heard a whisper. I think a good man for you to talk to would be. Ah! <laughs> I'm gonna look after him, Porto. Stop! You can leave the law. He's getting away. Quick! Stop the first vehicle that comes along, Porto. Well done, Porto. Put your foot down. <laughs> Where is he? Where is he? This is something I was at to, sir. How can't you go any faster, Paul? I want me from the floor here, sir. Come on. Stop, thief! <laughs> I think he's shaking us off. Who's when he got on that jet plane, sir? <laughs> I think that's when we lost him. Si, <laughs> senores. Uh, we would like a room, please. For two. Yes, please. Bathroom? Uh, yes. Come in. Make up two beds in the bathroom. <laughs> like breakfast, sir. You eat breakfast. It's nearly midnight. I meant in the morning. <laughs> oh, uh, yes, yes, please. Would you like anything now, sir? Uh, yes, yes, I'll have cornflakes, bacon and egg, toast and marmalade and a pot of tea. <laughs> and I'll have a kippa. <laughs> And now for another report about that American raid. On the telephone now is our foreign affairs correspondent, Mike Airy. The town of Trumpton was rudely awoken this morning by the sound of American F-111 bombers. The dawn attack was aimed at various targets in the town, and from our hotel window I can see smoke rising from what remains of the old lady who sold flowers in the town. The town's main industry has been badly damaged. Apparently, Windy Miller was standing outside his windmill whistling for the wind when he was hit by a 500-pound high-explosive bomb. Um, how are the emergency services actually coping with the situation, Mike? Well, the fire service, being Pew Pew, Barney McGrew, <laughs> and Club, were apparently trying to disarm a 1,000-pound fragmentation bomb. An eyewitness report has said that they were last seen hitting the bomb with little wooden hammers and singing a bomb disposal song when it went off. But Mike, what's the general feeling of the people of Trumpton? The mood here is one of bitterness. Anger and 
and resentment. This is perhaps best armed up by the local chief of police, a PC McGarry number 452, who said, Deary, deary me, what's all this then? This is Mike Perry for BBC Television News in Trumpton. <laughs> And finally, financial news. The pound has had another quiet day. It got up late, had a crap and read the book. Then, my mum sent me to a child psychiatrist. That didn't feel right. Talking about my sex life to a five-year-old. <laughs> Come in. Did it... <laughs> Did you, did you want to see me, Sir Robert? Yes, come in, Peter. Sit down. <laughs> Peter, there's been a terrible, terrible, terrible disaster. Oh, dear. A Chilean nuclear reactor has gone into meltdown. Gosh. You know what that means. Carnage. Chile con carnage. <laughs> the whole of the peninsula is covered with a dense cloud of nuclear radiation that will wipe out all human life now and for centuries to come. An invisible, deadly blanket of radiation covers the land, striking down every living thing that moves, crawls, or walks on the surface of the earth. Oh, dear. And I want you to be our man on the spot. <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> you will be the man's man at the meltdown. Here are your tickets. Check in time, half an hour. Good luck, Peter, and goodbye. Uh, yes, I, 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 excuse me, sir. I'm terribly sorry. Do, do you think... Could, could I just go over that again? Oh, come on, Peter. Time is money. Time is money. Fine, yes. Um, you, you, want, you want me to fly to San Diego? Yeah? <laughs> you can't fly to San Diego. There's a, there's a cloud of nuclear radiation oh, hanging over the ruddy place. No, no, you'll fly to Guatemala and go the rest of the way in a dugout canoe. <laughs> <laughs> um, sir, I mean, don't, 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 don't hmm? you think it'll be rather, um... Rather what? Well, rather dangerous. <laughs> dangerous. Danger is my middle name, Peter. Yeah, but it's not you that's going, is it? <laughs> Peter, think back. Have I ever asked you to do anything that I wouldn't do myself, have I? Well, no, sir. Well, I am now. <laughs> oh, God, I... oh, come on, Peter. I expected more of you than this. You're Peter Pillspatter, investigative journalist. Yes, your name is synonymous with selfless commitment, a lust for danger, fearlessness in the front line. I'm the sports editor, sir. Exactly. <laughs> well, I'm going to cover the QPR match. Oh, come on, Peter. This is a newspaper business. A man has got to do what a man's got to do. Yes, I think I might have done it already, sir. <laughs> the uh, executive facility. Sit down, Peter. Well, I'd, I'd better not if that's how it is. Sit down. down. <laughs> Look me in the eye, Peter. Yes, sir. I know what you're worried about. Radiation protection. <laughs> well, radiation, radiation protection, yeah. An impervious suit. Oh, no, an impervious suit, yeah. yes. Which stops the gamma rays from doing any damage whatsoever to the camera. <laughs> well, I mean, there's no chance of having this some of this suiting run up into a nice sort of safari outfit, is there? <laughs> That's a nice idea, Peter, but it won't wash. Yeah, well, I, w I wasn't thinking of washing it at all, actually. I thought I'd just keep it on, you know. Like, so. Peter. Is he whizzing? Let's get busy. Yes, sir, yes. yes. Oh, there's, now, there, there is just one thing. Yes. I'm not going. <laughs> you, can't you can't send me to my certain doom, sir. I'll die of radiation sickness. I'll we'll get you the best bone marrow money can buy. Please, sir. Please, I'm, I've just got married. Yes, well, we all make mistakes, Peter. No, it's not a mistake. I love my wife. What do you know of love? You don't know anything of love. All you think about is stories, stories, stories. That is a damn lie. And if you repeat it, I'll splash it all over the front page. <laughs> <laughs> think of my fragrant bride of only three weeks. All right, Peter, all right. I'm not an unreasonable man. I can see your point of view. Thank you very much. So just this once, you can take her with you. <clears throat> <laughs> Janet, get me one more ticket for Guatemala. Single. <laughs> Life can be full of those annoying little jobs. Washing the dog. Building rabbit hutches at the bottom of the garden. <laughs> or unblocking that guttering. <laughs> now we have the answer to all of those domestic chores. You need Ooh. Old Tom. <laughs> old Tom is everything an odd job man should be. He's slow, he's deaf, and he won't touch anything electrical. 
And the new improved old Tom won't need to use your loo because he's always gone before he came. <laughs> Tom is cheap, slightly racist and guaranteed not to die on the job. Available from most good old people's homes. <laughs> and if old Tom doesn't suit you, do your own odd jobs, you lazy bastards. <laughs> you know my idea of the ideal woman? Yeah, go on in. Marilyn Monroe. Oh, yeah, Marilyn. Big, busty, blonde, American and rich. Yeah. It's a pity you married that scrawny redhead from Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the thing is, if I had been with Marilyn rather than uh, Cheryl... Yeah. I don't think I'd have got a seven-year itch, you know. No, no. Well, no, you shouldn't have waited seven years anyway, really. I mean, once you've got it, it's best to go down the clinic, isn't it? Quite <laughs> quickly, just go down the no, not that. It's not that. It's a seven-year itch. You've heard of a seven-year itch. It's, you know, when you're married and, you know, you're, you, you know, you sort of fancy somebody else for a change, oh, see, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's the four-day itch, isn't it? No, <laughs> seven, a seven-year yeah, itch. Yeah. God, I, mean, I mean, look, Marilyn actually made it famous in one of her very best films. Oh, what, you mean in Some Like It Hot? That's the one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It was marvellous, it was marvellous. She was one. fantastic, oh, Marilyn. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I could have been happy with her, you know. Mm, yeah. I could, I could have been happy with Marilyn. Mind you, I wonder whether, like, a famous film star, right, with world renown and beauty like her, would have been married with an unemployed, happy with an unemployed gas fitter from Peckham, do you think? <laughs> well, I don't know, you see, I don't know, because if you look at it, she married some very odd people. Some yeah. very odd people indeed. Did she? Well, oh. you might have been all right then, after all. <laughs> well, no, but you've got, you've got, yeah. you've got, you've got like, uh, yeah. Joe de Majojo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, he was a basketball that's player. Right, yes, was, there was yes. a very famous playwright. Oh, that's right. Arthur, Arthur Mallard. That's right. Uh, <laughs> then there was the bloke who used to fix washing machines. William Bendix. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, and a monk. That's right, yeah. So yeah, she, yeah, so, well, yeah. she put it about a bit then, and, you know, like in her short and glittering life. Yeah, yeah. Way, yeah. Yeah, that's right. It was all summed up, wasn't it, really, in, mm. in that Elton John song. Mm. Crocodile Rock. <laughs> <laughs> no. Goodbye, Norma Jean. Oh, yeah. That's marvellous, isn't Goodbye, it? Goodbye, yeah. Norma Jean. Yes. Though I never knew you was blowing it like a candle that was snuffed out. Yeah. In the wind. That's right. Candling yeah. in the wind. Yes. Oh, it's a marvellous, marvellous lyric, that is, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. I'll tell you what I like about it, though. What's that? The words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, don't think like it was a... It was a, he made a mistake there calling her Normie Jean, didn't he, really? What are you I mean, talking about, Norma one? Jean? Norma Jean was her real name, wasn't it? Before she changed it. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, what did she change it to then? <laughs> <laughs> Marilyn Monroe! Oh, yeah, Marilyn Monroe. Well, of course she would have to, because, you know, that was like, well, she wouldn't have been famous. I'm no, right, exactly. No. Marilyn Monroe, yeah, mm. she's mysterious. Could have, could have, the mysterious thing about Marilyn, you know, yeah. was about her death. Was it? Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, nobody could make up their mind whether she was dead or not. No. <laughs> no they didn't know how she died yes. or why she died. Oh, yeah. Mm. There was, uh, there was a lot of, because, I mean, I know a lot about this, yeah, so I have to tell you. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people mm -hmm. reckon that she died... Yes. ...because she was carrying President Kennedy's child. Well, that's stupid, isn't it? <laughs> well, I mean, people think you could afford a pram or a push down or something like that, like President Kennedy. No, 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 not, put, no not carrying like carrying. Uh, carrying like... Oh, up you know, the she was up the dark. Oh, <laughs> with President Kennedy's doodads. With President yeah. Kennedy? Oh, yeah, with yeah. President Kennedy? Oh, blimey, yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, it, uh, he was the, uh, uh, the president. The president, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. And you see, the thing is, the thing is, the thing is, they didn't want no scandal. No. Like, obviously not, they didn't want no scandal, did no. they? So they tried to keep it quiet, hushed it up, oh, brushed oh, it under the carpet, oh, you see. Oh, I see. They murdered a pregnant film star. That's right, yeah. 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 That would keep it quiet. That's sort of right, thing. yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, that's one of the theories. Obviously, there are other theories about her death. Some say she committed suicide. Mm. Some say she just went driving with his brother, you know. Yeah, which is sort of... <laughs> <laughs> that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Monica, they're talking about death. I mean, there you are now. Kennedy's death. Now, there's a funny thing. Yeah. Do you know, they mm. reckon that everybody, everybody in the world knows where they were and what they were doing when President Kennedy died? Uh, he's dead, is he? <laughs>
Ashley said, can I have it back when you finish with it? Ethisch verlangen. Verlangen naar lekker. Jammer alleen dat het slecht is voor mijn tanden. Want iedere keer als ik iets vergeten heb, daalt de pH in mijn mond. Freedent is ook verlangen naar lekker. Maar Freedent helpt mijn tanden gezond te houden. Want kou ik Freedent nadat ik iets gegeten heb, dan stijgt de pH weer snel. En dat is goed voor mijn tanden. Dus kou ik lekkere Freedent. De eerste suikervrije kauwgom in Nederland. Erkend door de Wereldfederatie Tandheelkunde. Het is hun thuis. Het is hun wereld. Zij zijn hier op eigen terrein. En als wij ons niet aan hun regels houden, kan dat de dood tot gevolg hebben. Dit zijn de Dangerous Encounters van de natuur. Vastgelegd in een van de meest fascinerende natuurfilms die ooit zijn gemaakt. Dangerous Encounters bevat een aantal van de huiveringwekkendste conflicten tussen mens en dier die ooit zijn gefilmd. Dangerous Encounters is gefilmd en geproduceerd door Marty Stauffer, een van de populairste natuurfilmers in Amerika. Als u van spanning houdt en gefascineerd wordt door wilde dieren, dan is dit een film voor u. Dangerous Encounters, alleen te koop bij TV Shop. Als u nu belt, krijgt u bovendien Watching Wildlife. Een leidraad van een half uur voor het veilig bestuderen van wilde dieren in hun natuurlijke omgeving. Beide films zijn natuurlijk Nederlands gesproken. Bel TV Shop en bestel Dangerous Encounters en Watching Wildlife. Een reis van anderhalf uur door de natuur. Vol spannende en interessante gebeurtenissen. Geen opdracht is hem te gevaarlijk. Er is altijd een mooie vrouw bij hem in de buurt. Hij is een gevaarlijke vijand en een standvastige vriend. U ziet hem elke zaterdag en zondag. Word je moor als Simon Templer in The Saint. Arcade brengt nu ook de beste films bij je thuis. No one knew where it came from. What is that? No one knew where it led. We've opened up a doorway to a world we know nothing about. And now, no one knows. I can't make it work without the seven seven. How to get back. You got seven minutes. No! What a rush. New to go on video. Stargate. Instappen en meezwieren met de kermisklanten. Dit is een splinternieuwe dubbel CD. De kermisklanten spelen de 100 grootste hits van toen en nu. Kom maar! 100 hits voor nog geen 4 tientjes. Ja, 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 ja. 100 hits voor nog geen 4 tientjes. De kermisklanten. Het gezelligste accordeon nu over Nederland. Vanavond te zien bij TV10, de hoogst gewaardeerde politieserie ooit gemaakt. Hill Street Blues. Mijn vriend maakt vaak gebakken kipfiletrepjes in pittige kerrysaus met kokos. Hij vindt dat ik iets oosters heb. If you are of a nervous indisposition, do not watch this. Dan, 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 dan. The big lady is asleep on her bed. No sign of life. It is the dead of the night. Oh my goodness. What is that mysterious wind? Oh no, can it be? Are these vampire bats? Is one of those bats in disguise, bats? Hey up, the big woman's at it. It is the man back. <gasps> Look at those fangs. Look out, lady. Here he comes. Will nothing stop this beast? Well, that won't for a start. <laughs> he has evil things on his mind and something bloody nasty in his mouth. <laughs> It is too late. The evil geezer has her in his power. She is now the wife of Dracula. Having a kick on his favourite plank of wood in Transylvania. It still was the dead of night by my folks. <laughs> Is there a doctor in the house? There he is. <laughs> Wait a moment. 
hold of this, says the doctor. <laughs> Quick, doctor, before it's daylight. Uh... Or night time, or wherever it's supposed to be, anyway. One of the things. One, two, three. One hundred and eighty. <laughs> <laughs> The man bat has mysteriously disappeared and been replaced oh. by a Batman. Well done, Doctor. What a good bloke. Good riddance, Batman. Thank you and good and job. No, <laughs> oh, this is nothing. This is a bit of gas on the end. Well, I mean, that is the oldest stage. daughter of the man bat now. Carry on here anyway. Poking around or something. Oh, I remember this. Hey, well, never mind now. Oh, it. She, she'd had a lot of trouble with her baby. The baby's in here. Get the baby out, will you? She dropped it in the stingers. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Did You See? My guests this week are Mel Smith and Griff Rhys Jones. Hello, hello. So, first of all, Griff, what did you think of the first in the new series by Faye Hamper, You Can Look But Don't Touch? <laughs> which, one, which one was that? <laughs> the series about child prostitution in oh, New Orleans. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> when, when, when was that on exactly? About nine o'clock? On Thursday? No, Friday. Ah, yes. Yeah, I missed that one. I'm really sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's just a couple of friends, you see, and we, we, we always play five aside at the Sobel Sports Centre. And that, I, I, you know, I couldn't cancel it, and I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> That's awfully bad of me, isn't it? <laughs> well, Mel, what did you feel about that one? <laughs> It was all there, wasn't it? I mean, it was, it was, it was very, very good. I thought, the, I mean, I thought they were all very, very good, really. And I mean, what about the murder? Um, yeah, the murder. Oh, God. I mean, I really, I hate murder. I mean, I, I don't, people shouldn't murder, definitely. I mean, it's, I mean, it's not on, is it, to murder? No, I mean, no. You didn't see it either, did you? <laughs> no, no, I, no, I didn't. Um, well, I, was, I was at a restaurant. It was a sort of business meeting. Kind of went on a bit. Couldn't. Couldn't get it. Uh, but, but I did see the thing on uh, Wednesday at 10 o'clock. Yes, so did I, yeah. yes. Great. Well, I don't know about you, but I thought Peter O'Toole coped admirably with the role that Olivier made so much his own 30 years earlier. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 for me, uh, Lineker was the dominating influence on the film. Well, I mean, I mean Lineker and Beardsley, I mean, the way they actually work together. <laughs> Sorry, this is Strindberg, Wednesday. BBC Two? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> BBC One! Oh, dear. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and finally, the South Bank documentary. My <laughs> bloody video. I'm going to have to have it fixed, <laughs> honestly. Because it keeps recording the wrong channel, you know. I'm just... Damn, damn, damn. <laughs> well, I, I, did I saw the last five minutes of it, actually. But my mother rang up. Uh, <laughs> so I... Because I, I, I had to... Um, but, it, I mean, it looked good. <laughs> Was it good? I now declare this inner city recreational area open. <laughs> right, sir. I should warn you that anything you say may be taken down and used as evidence. Anything? Oh, yes. Right, lad. No, no, not the face. <laughs> now that's hurting, not the groin. You've ruptured my spleen. <laughs> the five of you are killing me. You're killing me. Oh, oh, oh. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Oh, no. As a member of the cabinet, I am privileged to live in an area where there is a conservative council. That way, I get the opportunity to buy my own rent boy. <laughs> Ladies and customers, tonight... <laughs> We have a very important announcement to make to you all. 
Yes, we have been in consultation with members of the government at the very lowest level, and we're here to tell you it's been decided to sell us off to the country. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the privatisation of Smith and Jones. <laughs> Possibly the last of the great share offers, certainly the first of the extremely stupid share offers. <laughs> this is the big one! Everybody in the country will be able to buy shares in us. That's right. There will be about 50 million shares in Griff and just over 100 million shares in <laughs> This is a fantastic opportunity for the people of Great Britain to buy a stake in the future of British comedy and to make two young men very wealthy indeed. <laughs> what will this mean for the future? In the interests of efficiency, we will be split up into two companies. British Melco. <laughs> Welsh Griffco. <laughs> and of course, we'll be selling off some of our less profitable assets, such as this outmoded funny face, <laughs> this unprofitable <laughs> and this surplus to requirements wig. <laughs> I would like to take this opportunity, however, to point out that this will not affect in any way the service that we intend to offer. Though, obviously, it will take a lot longer to have your telephone installed. <laughs> Not that this has anything to do with us. No, I was just warning everybody what's going to happen anyway. So, if you're the sort of person who'd like to take advantage of this amazing Smith Griffco share offer, this is the easy to use ordinary share application document. <laughs> and this is the dangerous to use extraordinary share application document for Guinness employees and Keith Best. <laughs> A lot of thought has gone into our slogan. We have finally come up with something which we hope will adequately reflect the mood of the nation as well as capturing the spirit of the offer. <laughs> Would you let your daughter make love to a son reporter? <laughs> Of humans, just like Bogans, and his underpants have stolen songs. Rub my club. Uh, caution, long vehicle. Ah. What's your name now? Saucy Susan, Naughty Nina, Raunchy Rowena, Chesty Cheryl. Elizabeth. Oh, cheeky Elizabeth. Right. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Beth, Beth. Busty Beth, is it? Big Betty, Lusty Lizzie, Luscious Lusty Lizzie. No. Whoa, Thin Lizzie, is it? Leggy Liz. Hey, hey. He smells of fruit in his sweating suit, and his wallet's full of plastic. He talks like an aisle. So, uh, where are we going in? Naughty nights in Norberton, is it? Swinging South London, saucy suburbia, passion in Purfley, passion in Putney, purple passion. Passion Pro, my purple nights of passion in Parsons Green. Boxer. Boxer, Boxer. 6 SW8, saucy south of the river, snared near Stockwall. Foxel, Foxel, Foxel. Vice, Foxel Vice. I crack the Vexel Vice ring. My nights of vice in Vauxhall with a woman they dub Leggy Lee. He's got a job to do and he does it well. Your place, is it? Yeah. Your love nest, London love nest, Lambeth love nest, middle man of Barry, is it? No. Pity, Knights of Vice with Vauxhall Vow, not Veronica, is it? Vera, you're not a virgin at all, a vet. Your father a vicar. His breath will stink of food and drink. It'll make your skin go quickly. Straight in, straight out, don't hang about. At least it's over quickly. Two in a bed, six rocks in London, love nest, Randy, rendezvous, naughty night, naughty nighty nights in naughty knickers, confessions of hot hostess with sex for sale in sun splash, South London, slut scandal. Nookie, 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 nonsense, says Neff, nicky, nicky, nookie, 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 knackers, nice legs, 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 eleven thighs, thighs, thighs the limits, lovely leggy limits, lovely luscious Lizzie's love lust, leggy legs, loony left, loony left legs. All the women, busty bets nights of two in a bed, passion with older men. Why, I prefer older men by the woman they dub long legged Liz, leg over. Oh, dearie me, she loved it.
Hello, Director Inquiries, Mr. Town. 